It's not really about the figure and the EQ. Uh, the reason why my talk is here is that the speaker who was supposed to talk today, he could not make it for Monday, so he'll be around either later today or tomorrow, so my, uh, my, my talk was swapped. Otherwise, I was supposed to talk tomorrow. Anyway, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be talking about this uh, R&D project we started recently uh, in Atlas, and the goal of this project is uh, to study uh, how we can benefit from the checkpoint restart uh, technique in Atlas offline software. So there are a number of use cases where checkpoint restart can be useful, and I'm not going to talk about all the possible use cases, in particular because uh, in 2013, at ACAT uh, was a talk by Peter Elmer, who actually nicely covered these use cases. He introduced this first uh, attempt to use checkpoint restart uh, by uh, CMS software and GM4M team. So there is a uh, reference to this talk later in this presentation. So in this uh, presentation, I'll be talking about one particular use case, how we want to uh, uh, benefit from checkpoint restart for optimizing CPU efficiency of Atlas production applications on opportunistic resources. So what we are going to solve here, what we're trying to solve here. So in Atlas, we have our software uh, framework, which is called Athena, which is serial. And uh, now for running production jobs on multi-core platforms, we use a multi-process version of uh, Athena, which we call Athena Multiprocess or MP. So this is a uh, very high-level picture showing uh, you how it works. So uh, we have a single uh, process, a serial process initialized, which goes through the initialization phase of Athena. And at some point after it's done with initialization, it forks uh, a number of uh, event processors, or how we call them, worker processors, who actually uh, proceed with uh, processing the, all the events assigned to the given job. So uh, this part, which is serial, you see that uh, when one core is busy initializing the entire thing, that other cores on the machine are idling, waiting for it uh, to go through the initialization. And sometimes, in some cases, this uh, serial part can be rather long. So there's a number of things which happen during this initialization step. Uh, and uh, we saw uh, at some platforms in some uh, types of jobs that it may take as long as uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Which means if uh, your job the time allocation of some resources is not that long, one or two hours, this can have a, a visible negative impact on overall CPU efficiency. So how can we uh, actually introduce the checkpointing in this uh, scenario, how we can benefit? For example, when we run GN4 simulation, uh, we run so-called the production task in the production system. And the jobs within the production tasks are quite similar. The configuration is quite similar. Basically, it's uh, almost absolutely identical. The only difference is that they run on different input files and different subsets of events from the given input file. So uh, what we can do for this kind of job, so uh, instead of going through the similar initialization over and over again, thousands of times, we can do it only once, run one job from the task, uh, and then uh, after the initialization step checkpointed, uh, create a checkpoint image, and then distribute the uh, checkpoint image over to various compute nodes. And later for running production, instead of going through the initialization again, we simply restart uh, production, production jobs from the checkpoint image, and we assume that it will happen uh, very fast. And uh, the jobs immediately restart from the image. They can immediately proceed uh, with event processing. And uh, uh, with this presentation, uh, I'll show you some preliminary re results obtained uh, by applying the strategy uh, to other simulation jobs. It's only about simulation jobs uh, on two platforms. One is volunteer computing, and second one is uh, Intel KNL on the super supercomputer. OK, so in order to uh, do the checkpointing, you need to have uh, some checkpointing tool. And there are a number of tools available. And uh, so far in our test, we've been using DMTCP, uh, which stands for Distributed Multi-Threaded Checkpointing. There is a website of this uh, tool. Uh, there's a number of uh, good things about DMTCP. I just listed some of them. So it can uh, actually distribute a single application or a distributed uh, computation as well. For example, it supports M MPI for running on supercomputers. It doesn't require root access and kernel level access. Everything happens in the user space. And they also claim that it's minimum uh, runtime overhead, although we have not really measured this overhead. But okay, that's one of the things which we want to do. 
And like I said in the beginning, uh, we are not pioneering uh, in testing uh, the MTCP, and uh, there was a presentation at ICAT 2013 about the first test with CMS SW and GN4 MT. So if anybody uh, is familiar with this you know, library, I just wanted to mention that um, uh, with our test so far, we uh, succeeded in integrating this library into Atlas uh, uh, software releases. And we are not using the latest version of the MTCP because there were some problems with that. We are looking into it. But for the moment, we just have this particular ver version uh, we are playing with. Okay? So a uh, little bit how we actually uh, do this checkpointing and restarting from the checkpoint images. So there are a number of ways you, one can checkpoint a running application. So it can happen either from within the application itself. So application knows when it's time to checkpoint, so it will call some API and checkpoint. This is what we uh, use in Athena. Uh, there's also a possibility to run some additional application on the same compute node, which will decide when it's time to checkpoint. For example, you run an opportunistic resource, and the resource is about to go away. Then so the second application is monitoring this situation. And when it sees that it's time to checkpoint, it can signal the running payload application and checkpoint it. But like I said, in our case, uh, like I described, uh, we want to checkpoint application at the end of the initialization step before forking the worker processes, which means that Athena MP knows when it's time to checkpoint, so it checkpoints itself. And checkpointing means that some image gets generated and written to the disk. Uh, uh, with the MTCP, it's not only one image file, but uh, there are also some auxiliary scripts which are generated, and scripts are uh, required for restarting which means that the number of files are created in the run, uh, in the run directory, which we put into tarball. And then we prepare the tarball for later usage. And we want, of course, to have this procedure as less uh, labor intensive as possible. So we introduced a special command line switches for so-called Atlas job transforms, which are the Python wrappers around Athena when we run on a uh, production system. Uh, there is this wrapper which prepares some configuration parameters and passes them over to Athena. So there is a special uh, uh, command line argument which was introduced. So now, once we uh, created this uh, Darbo, uh, we want to restart from it. For that, obviously, we introduced another command line switch, which we call a restart. And the restart actually points uh, the transform to the location of uh, the checkpoint image. So the transform proceeds as usual. It collects uh, configuration parameters, prepares some files. And, but then instead of uh, launching uh, the normal uh, way the Athena job, it will just restart uh, from the checkpoint image. And after that, after the restart uh, succeeded, the job proceeds as usual. Uh, so uh, one of the things which we started to look into at the beginning when we uh, saw that it can be useful for us was that, uh, of course, for uh, running, for example, a large set of jobs like production tasks, we want to create only one checkpoint image and then be able to restart from this image on different platforms, maybe different architectures. Okay, uh, but this is no, not real because uh, actually the NTCP ex expect to see the same or similar platform at least that, as the one which was used at uh, making the checkpoint image. Uh, so, for example, if you want to checkpoint on uh, some scientific Linux and then just blindly restart, restart it on uh, Mac OS, it just will not work. Uh, but here, what we can uh, use is we can leverage either containers or virtual machines to create a checkpoint within a container or virtual machine and again restart it from there. So by this way, we can kind of guarantee uh, the, uh, uh, that the environment at checkpoint at restart is identical. Although containers not always work here, VM is much better. And actually, we follow this uh, strategy for uh, testing at NMP checkpoint restart on volunteer computers on Boeing. So what it is, this Boeing? Uh, this is a project Atlas at home. I just quickly introduce this project, uh, which was started uh, in 2014 as an outreach tool to get public involved in Atlas. Uh, so it's basically there are some people who donate uh, their computing resources to the project, and Atlas can run simulation of these resources for a moment. Uh, it's used, it uses uh, virtual box, so, so the virtualization is supported, and it is integrated into production system. And Atlas has been running production since 2014. And here on the spot, you can see the millions of events produced at various uh, periods of time during this, period, this time since uh, 2014. And 
different colors here just to show the transition from serial jobs to multi-process jobs. But uh, from the grid uh, point of view, uh, you can say that Atlas at Home is currently an equivalent of a tier two site. So, but like I said here, uh, Atlas at Home actually is quite a good uh, choice for prototyping uh, checkpoint and restart uh, because some jobs, uh, so first of all, the jobs run in, inside the virtual machine which means that we have control of the environment. We can generate a checkpoint image within the virtual machine and restart it from there. So uh, checkpoint and restart environments are identical. Uh, so uh, depending on the uh, internet connectivity speed, uh, at, uh, Athena simulation can take really a long time on these machines, especially when it tries to read some uh, data from external databases. And jobs run for one or two hours, which means that the serial part really contributes a lot to the overall job execution time and speeding up make, makes a big difference. And we want to download this virtual machine disk image once and use it for each uh, job. So for this, we, like I said, we created a checkpoint image, we integrated it into a virtual machine, and uh, we succeeded in running some production tasks for testing uh, uh, with this uh, strategy. Unfortunately, here I cannot show you like good results uh, of some systematic studies with this uh, technique and how much benefit we get from it. Uh, partially because it took us some time to do some debugging and that was our first platform in which we tried this. And partially because uh, we just, uh, once we made it working, people started to disappear for holidays. So unfortunately, uh, I cannot say much, but at least those uh, results which we saw uh, demonstrated that if jobs with good internet connection take about four minutes to initialize, with bad internet connection 10 to 15 minutes, uh, when they restart from checkpoint image, they will basically start to get processing after 15 or 20 seconds from job start, which is already shows like a good uh, speed up. So the second platform in which we tested this technique is uh, Intel Night's Landing. And here I just, uh, introducing, um, I'm introducing you the machine on which we tested it. This is Cori supercomputer at NERSC in Berkeley. Uh, Cori has uh, basically consists of two machines. Phase one is Xeon Haswell, but the most interesting for us is this test was phase two, which is actually Intel KNL. Uh, you see some characteristic of this platform, and we started recently to run our production workflows, uh, simulation again, and the plot shows you how many events we simulated in one month, basically in month of July, and the total was about 55 million. So it's really becoming our one of the production uh, uh, sites for running simulation. And here, uh, here is a table which shows some results of uh, using the checkpoint restart on KNL. So on KNL, uh, what we did, uh, we generated uh, the uh, checkpoint image on the KNL, actually, and we restarted from there. So we have, again, homogeneous environment. And here we also tried two different types of images, one compressed and one uncompressed. So with uncompressed image, you uh, gain in restart speed, but you lose in the size because the image size is much bigger than compressed one. Uh, so, and actually, uh, one thing we also did for uh, running on KNL, we um, replaced these images to the run directories of the job, so the job did not spend any time on downloading and untaring it. So here you can see the sizes of the images of simulation jobs. So compressed image is uh, half a gig almost, uh, and the uncompressed is 1.8 gig. And the, the speed up you see is quite considerable. If just a normal case, uh, I think it takes 11 minutes to initialize on KNL. It goes down to 50 seconds for compressed image and 20 seconds for uncompressed image. So the results are really encouraging. So that brings me uh, to the last slide. And so, uh, like I said, uh, the tests we've done so far uh, look quite promising. Uh, so we see considerable speed ups on different platforms. But uh, like I said, it's just a uh, very preliminary test. So we just started to look into it. And uh, there are lots of things we want to study before we can uh, actually start discussing it seriously, how useful it can be for running the production jobs on different types of resources. Although at this point, it seems uh, that the people who run uh, Atlas simulation on uh, HPCs are quite interested in this, and we may even start benefiting to, uh, from it on a short time scale. But uh, for using it widely in production, we need to look into automation of the process, of course, and the validation of the results and things like this, which is, I mean, lots of things need to be discussed here. And uh, finally, we just wanted to thank uh, our fellow volunteers in Atlas at Home project with these nice names, Yeti and Magic, uh, who have been running uh, 
that nicknames. Hopefully, hopefully this is not a real name. Uh, so uh, they've been running the test for us and providing us with uh, this interesting results. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I promised you a question back also. Um, is it on? So the difference in the initialization time between 4 minutes and then 10 to 15 minutes for uh, slow versus fast connections to the database, was that? Actual that database, yeah, condition database. And, and you're waiting for the, the actual transfer of data, or you're waiting for different connections to be made, or what, what's actually no, the problem? I think, I think it must be at both, because we do a number of connections during one job, plus we also transfer the data, so I think it's both. And you know, the condition that the access is not really super optimal, so it produces way too many queries to the database. So I think it's all just a combination of all this uh, type of thing. I'm curious to see to to uh, to check whether you have um, compared the MTCP with other uh, checkpointing. Uh, uh, technologies okay. like uh, ICU or CRIU. CRIU, yeah. No, we did not do CRIU because, uh, I don't know, our test so far, uh, we did not succeed in running it not non root used. And we decided not. Well, it's interesting because we, this is one of the things we want to do, but we failed. Maybe we do, do some, something wrong, but given this limitation of time and manpower, we decided, okay, we, we try it later. Because presumably uh, relying on a Docker or container. Uh, technology would allow for a, you know, yeah, lightweight uh, container. Yeah. This is what Creo claims. But Creo is on the list of things How can you run your uh, physics software environment there via container or provide the HPC center VMs? So uh, special on the query setup. So uh, uh, on HPCs you mean in particular? On HPCs there are a number of ways you can do that. You can install your software on a shared file system and restart and start from there. Or you can do the container because there are a number of ways you can support containers on HPCs. Okay, so containers is one of the things in which uh, you can get very good results for speeding up the initialization. We saw that it scales pretty well. Uh, for a moment we are not using them widely. Uh, but it is one of the things which we are very closely looking into, and probably one of the things we we'll switch to, because you know the, not all HPC centers can support containers with the same uh, technology of containers. There is a shift there. Somebody is looking at sing singularity, but there is one, one of the things which we are closely studying and uh, we are considering it also. Uh, 